All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Wherever you happen to be on this planet. What a time to be alive. I haven't said that in a while. I haven't filmed early enough to say such a thing in a while. Yeah. Uh, it's a whole different vibe to it. You know, you jump in here, everything's fresh. So fresh, so clean. Last night I was watching this uh, Model S plaid delivery event. Mm -hmm. Pretending it was myself. I was pretending I was getting the Model S plaid delivered. You're just rubbing your hands. Oh, you mean this? That's the thing that drive, uh, drives Kirk nuts? Yeah, yeah. doing that right there, yeah. Licking your lips? Like, no, no, but if you had a slap to it, you just... And it gets real weird, right? Yeah. Anyway, thanks to everybody who's joining uh, this morning. I'm going to keep a little bit of an eye on everybody in the, in the chat over there. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, Will. They let me know everything's going smooth. Uh -huh. I know you've been in there with a wrench on an, on, an, on an occasion or two. Yeah, I like to have fun. Take it easy with a wrench, though. Talk with the fans. My goodness gracious. It's a good time. Yeah, so they had this event. It was late last night. Later than you told me, actually. It was one hour later than you told me. Mm. You must have had your PDT, E-E-S-T, whatever, time zones. Sure. It was 8.15 over there in Fremont. California, which was eleven fifteen, right for me. Uh huh. So, yeah, I was a late one. Because I told the kids, I'm like, yeah, you can watch the event because they started getting the cars now, mm -hmm. and of course they know about the Taycan, and they're like, you know, let me let's see what Tesla's got going on with this uh, Plaid model. So they wanted to stay up for it, but then next thing you know, it's eleven fifteen, and I'm like, I'm getting in trouble with the mom. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Their mom. It's like, what, what are these kids with doing? With your mom? What, and mine. She calls me up. What are you doing with those grandchildren? <laughs> she goes, what are you going to... Like, what are you doing? All the moms were mad at me. Yeah. That, out there. Probably even yours, actually. Uh-huh. She's probably like, what's he doing with those children up that late? Yeah. She came knocking on your door. Anyway, the question is, was it worth it? You know? What did we experience in the event? I know Elon, he flew in there late. They put it together. Uh, he put the... He had the custom leather jacket made up with the plaid logo on the back. Did you watch the event? I did, yeah. Yeah. I Dude. fell asleep, though. Hey! So I watched it in the morning. I watched it in the morning. So I guess the lateness got to you as well. Yeah. I'm an old man. Well, that's, I mean, you don't need to tell us. <laughs> yeah. So that was the funniest part when he, when he gets into the, <laughs> when he shows up and then he's just flying down a little track there. Yeah, that was fun. And uh, he just he just blasted off zero to sixty in under two seconds is the claim. Well, it's proven they've done it, they've achieved it, they've built it. It's hard. I mean, you can't get a vehicle at that weight going much faster than that at this point, which is the whole reason no. that that Roadster has to have the SpaceX package because we're 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 hitting this like critical. We're bumping into physics here. Well, yeah, that's the hardest thing to. Uh break right the hardest thing to bump into <laughs> <Yeah>. physics yeah <laughs> damn that old thing damn that's tough to bump into just want to give a quick shout out here we got a super chat courtesy of nick uh thank you so much nick for the positive words as Look well how happy he is yeah when he jumped out and his belly popped out i'm like you know what <laughs> i'm like that's genuine right there you see i mean i guess it's not t technically his belly but uh, my kids also enjoyed that moment. They said, like, that's legit excitement right there. Yeah. He's happy with the vehicle. Look, I know how this goes. It's so hard when people have expectations set up. People were like, is there going to be anything special? Is it going to be a surprise? Are they going to just, like, like, what is a delivery event? Right? You're not announcing a product. So you got to sort of set your expectations. At least that's what I did. I was like, okay, we're just going to get a walk around, a little sales pitch. If you haven't bought this car yet, then maybe you want to purchase it i guess i don't mm. know but uh we did we did get a personalized sales pitch from elon and that was good enough for me because you saw how he was a little bit giddy about it he said this is the most fun you're gonna get on four wheels or just in general in life if you buy this product uh -huh. it's the most fun you're gonna buy you're gonna hit the accelerator it's gonna be ridiculous and, but beyond that, beyond the performance, I mean, most of the event they spent on the interior. And again, it wasn't surprises, right? We knew that there was going to be a hefty gaming PC built into it. Uh -huh. 
And they went ahead during a presentation and said it's going to be as powerful as a PlayStation 5. And they showcased some live gameplay mm -hmm. of Cyberpunk playing in the car. Although you didn't see the person themselves playing. I guess they were in shadow. One of the things about the production... Oh, there they are. You see, I see an arm. One of the things about these Tesla event productions is they feel kind of startup-y. They feel, I mean, like there's Apple on one end of the spectrum, there's Tesla on the other. Like when the window shattered and just Elon's own it's like kind of spontaneous yeah. way of being. Can you move the slides? Can you, the next slide? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's fun. It's dynamic. There is something fun about it on the opposite end of the spectrum where it feels more unpredictable. You're mm -hmm. like, man, I don't know. Are they ready for this? It feels like he just rolled in. He got there. Yes. Like it's just like barely made it on time uh -huh. kind of thing. Uh, they slap the leather jacket on him. They're like, all right, go. Uh -huh. You know. Another shout out to Adrian. Thanks for the super chat as well. Um, so what else did they talk about? Okay, so the interior gaming PC, you have the yoke is a real thing. The yoke is actually happening. And they talked about how the whole point with the yoke is to improve the experience for self-driving modes. You don't have the top part of the steering wheel in the way. And I've experienced this in a lot of cars where... The way things are lined up where you want to have the steering wheel, it sort of blocks that display in front of you. Exactly, yeah. I hate that. It's the worst. You're like, how do I position this so I can see through the thing properly and uh, and still have a comfortable driving position? So the yoke sort of solves that. Now, I'm sure there's going to be, it's got to be some kind of downside when it comes to, uh, I don't know, like just we're so used to having a wheel there. And certain maneuvers, I'm sure that there's going to yeah. be some people that are still going to want to opt for the steering wheel. Yeah, what's that uh, 10 and 2? Your yeah. hands always have to be there. <laughs> you take well, this you one, can't really do that. You take here. this one to the driving you test. You fail instantly. And they're like, you're out. Get out of my face. I'll give a shout out as well to uh, Jan Meet Bali for super chat in there. Thank you, guys. Appreciate all the support here on Lou Later. You know, we love doing it. We love having you, especially when it's live every so often. It's an extra feeling to it mm -hmm. there's an extra piece to it um so yeah so they went with the yoke the yoke is in there i like the look of it i think this whole spaceship vibe is something cool uh and, you know another thing that he mentioned in there was around charge speeds he said we got a USB-C charger and they're 36 watts i was uh -huh. like oh cool it's kind of our territory there talking about a couple of watts mm -hmm. he said you could even charge your laptop some laptops uh, they talked about how they maneuvered certain things inside to get more legroom in the back seat. In fact, he went so far to say, this is a real back seat now. Almost uh, taking a shot at the previous generation. He's like, no, 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 we got a real, uh -huh. ba we got a real back seat right now. Was it really that tight? I don't remember. I don't, you don't think so. That? No, it wasn't that tight. But I guess for uh, as far as like, like luxury sedans are sure. concerned, you got the likes of the EQS existing now. Do you remember that back seat? Yeah. That was a back seat. Uh -huh. So Tesla also claimed that this model is the number one world's best drag coefficient for a production car. They, that was a big deal. Another thing that they spent some time on, that like, man, the engineers went to work. And it's slight tweaking to that. Mm -hmm. They talked a little bit about the audio system, which you've highlighted over here, 920 watts, 22 speakers. He kept saying, like, entertainment is a big consideration in here. Uh, it's about being able to watch a movie, play games. Maybe you're at a supercharger or maybe you're just having to wait. Like, can you think of a better car where you have to wait for somebody than mm -hmm. this? Like if you're spending a lot of time, imagine you're one of, imagine you're like a DoorDash driver. Yeah. And you have this car. I mean, that seems uh, obscene, but like, I mean, probably actually it's not a good idea because you're doing a lot of miles. Uh -huh. Anyway, just imagine that you're waiting at all these different pickup spots and you got that level of entertainment on the inside. Yeah, you just stay there. But everybody has had the experience of waiting for somebody and wishing they had a little more entertainment. Or this, just uh, waiting for your car to charge. Yeah, at the supercharger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the most common as far as electric cars are concerned. But you could be, I don't know, having a snack on a road trip and all of a sudden you pull the movie up. Sure. They have a 17-inch display. It's beyond 1080p. It's backed by PlayStation 5-like performance. They tightened up the UI. Um, it's just looking a lot more modern. It's got the dual wireless 
phone chargers down in the bottom. You have the display in the back of the car for the passengers, which you can map to the same thing that the front display is seeing so everybody can catch a decent view. They now have a sort of a digital input for something they're calling invisible AC. So you can simply touch the display in order to maneuver mm -hmm. the direction of the vents. You don't see the vents. You don't see them. Yeah, It, it cool. feels like a diffuse kind of cooling that's going on. You see the charging in the back as well for the rear occupants. Uh, let's talk about range. So some people had hoped that there was going to be uh, a big range improvement or boost from what was originally mentioned because Tesla canceled the Plaid Plus, mm -hmm. which was slated to do above 500 miles. It was very exciting for EV fans. Uh, it didn't. It didn't turn out that way. The Plaid is still listed at 390 miles, and the long range, rather than reaching the 420 that some people had been looking for, 405 is the list here on the EPA estimate. I don't know. I mean, once people get their hands on it, they're gonna probably find out what the real world range is. But that's what they're listing for the time being. Now, the Plaid, as you've seen, it's more about performance, or the performance is a big aspect of it and we recently had the jay leno confirmation and then you had elon b basically saying during the presentation that what you have here is the world's fastest or quickest i think he said fastest but probably should have said quickest production car and it has four doors and it can drive itself and it has a gaming pc in it so that's a pretty decent package as far as i'm concerned <laughs> yes I think uh, what he said was really uh, interesting is the fact that, you know, your your um, smartphone or your keys, you kind of just go near it and then the door automatically opens, mm. the car turns on, and then you're ready to drive. Actually, building on that, the the fact that you have no stock to select reverse or, or uh, drive... Mm -hmm. That kind of is in line with what you just mentioned. The whole idea here being that user input is an error or a problem. Right. I don't know what terminology he used exactly, but everywhere where you can avoid an input and have the car decide for you that they wanted to do that. And so when you sit inside, based on your past history and a variety of other data, the car is going to know if you need to reverse or move forward. Mm -hmm. It's called auto shift. Thank you to somebody in the chat there. Uh, some people are nervous about that. They're like, man, I don't know. This thing trust that it's in reverse. And, uh -huh. You can come barge through the back wall over there, Will. Like the Kool-Aid man. Or, or also, if you get used to it, and then you go drive some other car, and you're like... I know, yeah. You've reprogrammed that yourself habit. to... Uh -huh. It's going to feel like such a nuisance to go into some old-fashioned car and have to select which drive mode you want to be in. So, I, I don't know. He seems really confident in the fact that this one is gonna, uh, that this feature is, is gonna be something that people just get used to and that people are going to come to expect. So anyway, I ordered one of these. I don't know what the status is. I didn't receive an email or anything yet, but a number of users were at this particular delivery event and they got their cars. So they are ship, beginning to ship out finally. Seemed like it wasn't gonna happen. So that's exciting. But yeah, as far as events go, I don't think that you can have the same expectation around delivery events that you can have around um, product launch events. Some mm -hmm. people wanted a Cybertruck update. That didn't happen. It's starting to look like Cybertruck is getting pushed, getting pushed a little bit. You know, we might mm -hmm. be looking into well into 2022 by the looks of it. Yeah. Maybe even towards the end of 2022. Mm -hmm. It takes time to build cars, and uh, there's a lot of Model Y focus going on right now. Sure. But either way, I think this is exciting. I think if you look at the specs, I know that it's not a massive overhaul and it's mostly in the interior, but this was desperately needed for their flagship vehicle. And it was important for them right now at a time when you have the likes of the EQS and the Taycan Turbo S. And this category actually for them has just, the, the competitiveness has increased massively in the last year. So something had to happen. Something did happen. I'm excited to actually check it out. And, and get a chance to drive it. We have a lot more on the show today beyond just this uh, little Tesla update. 
we have a couple of tech stories as well. But first, a word from the sponsor. Uh, first sponsor is Clear. Clear creates frictionless journeys. Experience a faster, effortless way through security at airports and beyond. Clear makes it easier to do what you love. You can use your face or eyes for safer, touchless entry at airports, stadiums, and more. Feel confident returning to what you love, whether it's traveling or cheering for your favorite sports team. This is very timely right now, Will. Mm -hmm. We're finally starting to get back on track here with the travel and the events. Mm -hmm. And so can you think of a better time to talk about a better way of doing that? No, you can't. Because you want to travel, and this is the most seamless way to do it. Minimal impact. You just breeze through. Mm -hmm. Join over 5 million people who are already using Clear for seamless experiences nationwide. Once you become a member, you can use Clear across the, uh, their network, of, including airports, stadiums, arenas, concert spaces, offices, restaurants, and more. Clear members can add up to three friends or family members to their account for a discounted rate of only 50 bucks each year, plus kids under 18 can tag along for free. The whole point here is fast and effortless in places where typically it can be a headache getting, getting through. This is going to just turn it into a breeze. Clear is the absolute best way to help you get back to what you love. They have locations in over 35 airports across the country, making it safer, easier, and faster to reunite with loved ones. That's another thing. A lot of people are going to see loved ones for the first time in a while coming up this summer or take that much-needed vacation. You probably use one of those, too. It works great with pre-check as well. Right now, for a limited time, you can get your first two months of Clear for free. Go to clearme.com slash Lou later and use the code Lou later. That's C L E A R M E dot com slash Lou later. Code Lou later for your first two months of clear for free. Clearme.com slash Lou later. Code Lou later. Second sponsor today is Express VPN. This is a no brainer. You're online. You want to protect your activities. You want to have your privacy. All kinds of companies making big privacy claims these days. Mm -hmm. Here's a way to do it. Slap on a VPN on any platform. ExpressVPN works across iOS, Android, Mac, Windows. There's even a little Linux logo on there. And the other thing it's going to do for you, Will, besides giving you this VPN to protect your activities and privacy, it's also going to unlock for you regional content in, uh, from services that, for whatever reason, have blocked it in your particular region. It is the internet without borders. Access the content you love anywhere in the world. Break through geo blocks. And the other thing is, is speed. Once you go with the premium VPN like ExpressVPN, when you go to do your streaming, when you go to do your airplay, I mean, I can speak from personal experience, variety of services, you're getting the full streaming experience that you would have as if you weren't even using a VPN. So 160 locations, 94 countries to choose from. Unlimited bandwidth if you're not using a VPN. Now's the time. Express VPN, they got a deal as well. Uh, stop letting strangers invade your online privacy. Protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash later. Use my link, expressvpn.com slash later to get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash later to learn more three extra months free or just click the link in the description it'll take you there as well all right next up in the news microsoft is apparently going to be putting xbox into tvs mm. building its own streaming devices and exploring new game pass subscriptions everything is heating up in the world of gaming and the world of streaming mm -hmm. streaming gaming and whatever, however they're going to collide and solve the thing that already happened in non-gaming media, which is the complete transition towards streaming. Mm. Of course, Xbox has the X Cloud stuff going on, which is already a step over there. Google has the Stadia stuff going on. Uh, NVIDIA has the GeForce stuff going on. There's so many players. It's really early stages. It's reminding me of streaming in the early days mm. when it was like uh 
well, do you have the bandwidth? Or I mean, I, I've told you in the past, I'm one of these people, I've been on Netflix so long, I used to get DVDs in the mail before it was feasible for them to have a streaming service with the internet. There was actually a moment where some of the stuff had been transcoded, it existed on the server, you could stream it. Uh -huh. But then certain titles hadn't made it yet. Oh. And then those titles, like some foreign film you needed to watch. I mean, I used to have time on my hands. And then that one would still come in a paper envelope and you'd be like, mm, I say you, that's a, that one right there. Yeah. Is a special premium, a uh, special evening because I got the, whatever I got, the French film nobody knows about. <laughs> I'm telling you, I used to have time on my hands. Yeah. Anyway, so the gaming thing, it's going to get figured out. I'm telling you right now, I can smell it. It's going to get figured out. The question is which way, which implementation. Mm -hmm. And the weird part is, the TVs themselves already have a lot of hardware in them. I mean, you see LG talking about it all the time. Like, wait, we upgraded our hardware. Not, I'm not talking about the display itself. I'm talking about the processing. Mm -hmm. You start to think, okay, you have these tiny little streaming sticks and things that are quite capable as well. Why don't we just integrate this stuff all into the TV, make the deals, and then just load the Xbox app right on the LG TV? So you're talking about a console -less experience i am yeah that's what i'm talking about well because the point is it's all happening in the cloud anyways right so you don't need to have this giant box underneath the display imagine just one sleek display and then your consoles are just an app inside of the display well that's the dream right yeah so now in the meantime since a lot of people aren't going to have tvs that can do that well i don't know that it's i mean there isn't a single tv that's doing that at the moment with these brand names but there could be an interim, which could be some sort of streaming device via, via HDMI, which, again, gives you a more lightweight opportunity compared to a full-scale Xbox. Now, there's always going to be disadvantages, right? If you're streaming, if you're streaming rather than having it happen locally, there's more bandwidth requirements uh -huh. and opportunity for a failure on that front. So it's not an, a perfect solution, but for a lot of users that are whatever, space sensitive or want lower upfront costs, mm -hmm. you can see why something like that would be compelling, some sort of game subscription instead. So we'll have to see what develops, but uh, ahead of the E3 briefing, Microsoft put the announcement out there. They said Xbox is building, oh, here we go. The company is working with TV manufacturers to embed the Xbox experience directly into internet connected TVs with no extra hardware required except the controller. That's pretty wild. And then also the cloud gaming aspect with the potentially the streaming device. So everybody, it's all, you know what it is, Will? It's all coming together for some massive battle to take place because you have Apple wants a piece of that. There's rumors of Netflix getting into gaming. I already mentioned Google, of course, GeForce. Then, the, then you have Xbox and PlayStation, and they all want you to game everywhere and on any device mm -hmm. eventually. And so then these partnerships and integrations are really going to matter. It would be interesting because Sony already has smartphones. Go right? on. Go on. They have TVs. Go on. I don't know what else. <laughs> they have a PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That they can integrate the PlayStation into those uh, devices. Mm. Right. They already have like kind of a leg up unless Xbox can partner with like, you know, Samsung. Or well, Microsoft has hardware. Would it be do, insane yeah. for them to just do a Microsoft TV? No, not at all. Maybe not. I mean, they're doing the Surface products. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways to do it. But as far as what they're saying right now is they are talking to TV manufacturers. I think LG would be uh, probably at the top of their list for potential partners. But, of course, Samsung's in there as well. Um, so speaking about Netflix, Netflix continues to diversify, figure out what the future looks like. And in the future... It's not just about content. It's about fandom. It's mm. about the cultures around the different... Exclusive content. ...series that they're doing. And so, you know, what they did with Stranger Things. They created a whole uh, universe around it. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I was at the ice cream shop and they had a Stranger Things promo. And it was like based on some ice cream shop inside of the show and like all these... The marketing stuff that we talked about recently, mm -hmm. where they went and took the front page of USA Today for their new show, um, Sweet Tooth. I finished that show, by the way. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
but I'm not going to spoil or give you any. It actually, it was kind of a moment where we watched the eight episodes and it feels like there's so many unanswered questions and they're like really hooking you on that next season for that thing. Oh, so they're preparing. For a I didn't season. get any. I felt like I got nothing. Like, yeah. I mean, I got something, but I'm not trying to discourage somebody from watching it, but I'm telling you, and maybe this is the case. I don't watch that much stu much stuff. Maybe this is always the case where you get a feeling at the end of it that they're really pitching you on the next one. Right. Season two or whatever it is. I got that. Maybe some people like that feeling. I don't know. Mm. The cliffhanger thing. Mm. You ever been cliff hung? Yes. You have. I have. have. Well, Game of Thrones, really. Oh, yeah. They you, had some I saw somebody left a comment. And said, hey, Lou, you strike me as the type of guy that the minute you finally watch Game of Thrones, you're the number one fan. Somebody said that. <laughs> well, you did. The first season. No, I wasn't. It was, I, I, it, wasn't right? I wasn't the number one fan. No. Oh. I couldn't handle it once the dragons got involved. Oh. Once the CG got started going wild. Like, I think I told you this before. And it's not that. It's not against the genre or whatever. It was just a moment that I had where I was like, how can I describe this moment where I it became the when it became when the fictional aspect got ratcheted up? I was like when the fantasy became too the, much. When the fantasy got ratcheted up, I was like, and this is this is my own problem, but it got to a point where I had trouble with the engagement. No, I I, I get you because um, all that political stuff in the first season was really interesting. And we talked about this before, like it, it could have went on as human politics, right? Yeah, and maybe it was my, it's my own problem in the sense that I wanted, I, maybe I wanted it to be something that it wasn't because everybody was talking about it and I was like, damn. And I got to a point in the first season where I was like, damn, this is, because medieval, Braveheart, like whatever, medieval, you got me. Like yeah, it's, that's very cool. It's, it, 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 it's, I, I have questions, I'm following along. You got kings. You got. I felt like it has so much. Go and then, um, was my own problem, yeah. where I had much like people who were watching the Tesla event, and they were like, "Where's my? Where's the one more thing element?" You know, I just had a <laughs> wrong expectation about it. Sure, yeah. But then, but then now that my kids are a bit older, and I know Game of Thrones is mature, but now that they're older, I'll take more fantasy based risks. Like yeah. I'm watching the Sweet Tooth, and the dude's got horns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's a hybrid. But in my own private time, it seemed like it's different rules. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I hear, I hear you. I get it. You, you you were wanted to say something there, but you restricted yourself. Yeah. It was, was it inappropriate? Well, I was just going to say, like, the first season, spoiler alert, with Game of Thrones, like, the last scene was the birth of the dragons, right? And it was, I guess, to everyone really exciting, but to you, you're probably like, oh. This is lame. <laughs> no, I didn't say I didn't say it in those terms that it's lame. I just from that moment viewed the genre differently. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, I'm watching. Oh, that's what I'm watching. I see." Mhm. Mm and but I said I told you well, it was my own problem. I'm not trying to tell anybody that there's like why why should one content be more be better than some like whatever your the thing that you happen to be into. I'm just saying that that was a moment for me. Yeah. Uh, but it's unfortunate because that's where they spent all the money. Once they started getting these dragons, it must have cost a fortune. Oh, yeah, the CG. But I'll tell you something else, Will. Just to clear the ground here, mm -hmm. I rarely make it past one season anyway of anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I would mostly, like, I feel it's downhill after the first season uh -huh. in most cases. I also feel the same way about movies. Like, very rarely is a sequel living up to it for me. It has happened. Uh -huh. More often than not, I feel like okay, I got it. Right. So that's just to set the groundwork of where I'm where I'm at, comparative to people who want to watch, you know, ten seasons sure. or something. Like I can't imagine ten seasons of the same subject. Matter no, I understand. Myself. Mm -hmm. Netflix. Anyway, what they're doing is different from that. Like what I was talking about around the culture around a show. They're gonna have their own online store now, where. They're going to be selling limited edition merchandise. And there's a few things in here I think you might be interested in. Okay. Because you, you've been known to indulge. 
Get some swag. From time to time, you've been known to indulge. So Netflix.shop is going to be available in the United States starting Thursday and expand into other countries in the coming months. I guess that's yesterday by the looks of it. The online store offers a new source of revenue for Netflix and expands its product line beyond the items it sells through partners such as Target and Walmart, which I didn't even know they were doing that. So they've got streetwear and action figures based on anime series Yasuke and Eden. Anime apparel. And decorative items inspired by French crime thriller Lupin. The Lupin products were developed with the Louvre Museum. What's the name of that museum, Well, The Louvre. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Um, Netflix is a culture, man. Yeah. You got to uh, rep it. Like, once you buy the merch, you're deeper in. Now you're embedded. You, like, look at the shirt in the drawer or whatever or the action figure, and you're, like, embedded. You can you you understand how that works, right? Yeah, um, you get more invested into it because uh, you actually spent dollars. You spend some dollars. Now here's the other one: Netflix is going to do their own logo wear as well, which is developed with Japanese fashion house beams. Okay. So are you prepared to to wear some Netflix logo wear? Just mm. Netflix gear? No, absolutely not. No. I mean, why? Just Netflix. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to say Netflix. I'm sure they'll find yeah. a way to do it. These uh, That fashion group sounds serious, so I'm sure they'll find a way to do it. But look at this, Will. It's nice that there's no uh, Netflix branding. On no, that. no, but there will be on some stuff, I'm okay. sure. Eventually on some stuff there will be. Or maybe they'll come up with like funky, subtle ways of integrating their brand. Don't mind that. I don't know. Maybe they'll embrace the memes or something. Sony, speaking of, you were just saying, they make all these things. Well, they're now in the drone business as well. Yeah. They announced a $9,000 professional drone, which is designed for the A-series cameras. So that's going to be a little bit heavier than the typical your typical drone. Mm -hmm. um, there's some downsides to it, but there's some upsides to it. You know, if you throw one of these cameras onto a drone, I mean, you see the quality these can deliver mm. up to 8K or high frame rates in 4K. You throw that on a drone, it ain't going to look like a tiny little camera, camera sensor like you would have on a more consumer level drone. So yeah. for filmmakers and cinema types, this is going to give you something extra. Plus you have interchangeable lenses, so that can drastically change the look of what you're trying to get. So it's called the AirPeak S1 drone, and it's capable of carrying the 8K capable Alpha 1 camera, but also the A7S Mark III or the FX3. It'll be attached to a special version of the Gremzy T3 gimbal, so for stability. Here's the worst part. The drone will have 12 minutes of flight time. Oh, but, Will, you just get the shot, and it, previously you would have had to get a helicopter or you couldn't even fit it through there. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> no, it, this is really impressive. Um, I would be terrified to drive this thing. 20 grand. Yeah. 20 grand. You crash it, 20 grand. Yeah. Potentially 20 grand, assuming if everything gets destroyed. Man. Yeah, you got to really get it together. You got to be a pilot at that point once you're at that level. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll fly longer, 22 minutes, if it doesn't have the load on it. Oh, okay. So that is part of it. But there's some cool clips, some sample clips down below here. You can give people a taste. Play the first one. And this is uh, on Iriomot Island, Okinawa. I mean, it's like a helicopter shot, dude. Like the quality of it. Yeah. And I, I understand you got 12 minutes to work with. You see the carbon fiber. I mean, they try to make it light. Here's the controller interface is working on an ipad in this scenario of course as mentioned interchangeable lenses you can control the gimbal you can uh, you can utilize the drone gimbal combo as a single oh. you, uh, single camera person or you can have two people mm. for but like look at this shot how do you get this shot will how do you get that shot you can't fit a helicopter in there you can't fit a helicopter in there no, you can't. Get it together, Will. Yeah, it is very impressive. But you're right, man. 
I'm got like 12 minutes on a battery life. I'm like, oh God, land. I got to land it. Oh God. Terrifying. But if you're using it on big productions, you got a big budget, don't you? Mm-hmm. I mean, like you could use this on uh, Avengers or something like that. Uh-huh. They still do the Avengers? Uh, Yeah. Really? I thought it was, I thought it was over. Well, they're doing like spinoffs and stuff. Okay. But when can they go when can they go back and do the Avengers again? Like a remake? I don't know, can they? Uh, I feel like they have to at some point, right? Or do they put them to bed? Like it's that's it. I think so. What? Yeah. They made money over there. Yeah. Maybe in like fifty years. We'll see. <laughs> well. It's rude, man. Yeah. Uh here's a little pixel launcher design tweak that I thought was novel. It's a tiny thing that hasn't existed on on your mobile OS and seems so obvious. So it's a new outline to show you exactly which space an app will occupy. I think you'll appreciate it because your um, your background as a programmer and designer and whatever. <laughs> the UX designer? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Did you see how subtle it was? You move the app around and it gives you a little outline of the space that it will occupy before you drop it. Uh, yeah, that's nice. See that? Little that's... tiny little design tweak, user-minded. I hate that when I'm holding it and like I'm looking for the other app to shift out of the way. Mm-hmm. And then it doesn't and you're not sure where it's going to drop. It's brutal. Yeah, or when you, you know... Do it mistakenly and all of them shift? Yes. All the icons? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's not a thing you do every day, but it goes Brutal. to show, but it goes to show you like the level, like how granular mm-hmm. the process of developing something like this and the tiny little tweaks and improvements that happen over such long periods of time yes. to get you. And honestly, this, this clip here just reminded me how much I miss using a pixel. Mm-hmm. Just the, the pixel launcher. And the speed and like the oh I don't know man I can't wait for that next pixel right I gotta get I gotta get off this iPhone real quick yeah and get into that pixel maybe so, maybe I'll do something in the in the interim maybe I'll just go to one of the pre existing pixels I don't know sure but anyway this is Android twelve tiny little tweak over there oh this is a thing that you have talked to me about in the past why does cryptocurrency crash on the weekends I don't I'm not even really looking at the crypto that much uh huh. I told you that, you know. After I stopped goofing with the gambling coins. Yeah, for a second. I was with the gambling coins for like, I don't know, a week. And then I was like, what? That's not, the entertainment value just went. Yeah. Anyway, so then I just got back to the Ethereum and that was it. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. But anyway, if, if you follow the the crypto markets at all, you realize that on the weekends it, they, it tends to crash and people were curious, like, what, what's up with that? What, why is that always happening like that? Well, there's a few possible reasons outlined here in, in, on this article. Investors may trade cryptocurrency outside of the work week, allowing for those after hours price swings. Fluctuations happen on weekends due to less volume, margin trading, and other factors. Weekend drops may have significant effects as regulators weigh long-term plans for digital currency. So that's what's different about the stock market, obviously. Uh, Crypto markets. It's 24-7. Do your thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no downtime. No downtime. No sleep time. No sleepy time for Will. He's just refreshing. That's all I do. As he's losing all his money. Um, So, yes. So banks obviously are also not open. And, but when the volume is low, trades have a bigger uh, potential to, to shift things quickly than when you have high volume, which balances and averages things out. Uh, typically, there's a rebound on Sunday night as Asian banks open back up and into Monday as U.S. banks follow. This is, uh, where's the important part here about I'm just looking for the bank. Oh, yeah, here we go. With banks closed over the weekend, some traders may struggle to pay off borrowed funds because they can't move money into their accounts, triggering sell-offs from exchanges. So there's actually some individuals who are on a daily basis taking funds 
for the purpose of trading under the pretense that those will be returned. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. But with banks closing up over the weekend, they may require those funds back, triggering the sell-off before the whole thing starts over again on the Monday. Huh. That's another potential. But anyway, just if you're new to crypto and you're like, and you buy on a Friday and buy Saturday night, you're like, what have I done? Uh -huh. You might want to wait it out till Monday sure. and see if there's a rebound or not. Here, here's a new viral Mark Zuckerberg clip. I don't know how viral it is. He, po he posted to his own Facebook. But there's something funny about his clips. I think the internet obviously um, recognizes such a thing because it always results in memes. Everything he does. Yeah. If it wasn't the smoked meats and then followed by the surfboard sunscreen. Uh -huh. And now we made it all the way to the spear throwing Mark Zuckerberg. Now, do you notice yeah. anything as you watch the video clip and you do not allow your eyes to scan anywhere else? Do you notice anything strange about that clip? Anything strange. As he throws this spear towards the target. Well, he's wearing, uh, are they headphones or are they ear protectors? Yeah, that, that would be uh, ear protectors, and you've nailed it. It was yeah. part of the headline. People were thought it was very bizarre that he was protecting his hearing while throwing spears, not, tip, not usually a loud uh, experience. Oh. But the thing was... It are you sure they're not headphones? No, because, because, uh, well, scroll down, scroll down. He, he oh. was messing with other weapons, but there's, yeah, I, I don't think they're headphones. I don't know. The article says that it's ear protection. Yeah. Wearing ear protectors. But, but there's another part, which he said, I wanted to go for a hike, but you need a permit right now to go for a hike to limit the number of people. Uh -huh. And he said they were all out of hiking permits, but they had plenty of hunting permits. So I got one of those, but then he's messing around with like a spears and bow and arrow and stuff like this. So I'm, I'm assuming that there was a whole set of weaponry here, including some things that were loud, which is why he was, he, it seems like he may have skipped the gun portion. Oh, I'm guessing, I don't know, sensitivity or something. That's nothing but speculation right there. But either way, he never can, he never ceases to surprise us with what he's up to and how he's going to and how he executes his uh, activities here. Yeah, good form though, I guess. You're happy about the spear sure. throwing? Yeah, he's having fun. Somebody, Remember? somebody in the chat says that those are not ear protectors; they're prototype Facebook headphones. Oh, okay. Well, that solves it. He's joking. Yeah. He also says Zuckerberg must be an alien for sure. I'm not convinced. But it's possible. Anything is possible in this life. The Star Trek data variant. <laughs> it, it is. Isn't it strange, though? Like, he updates. He's the CEO of Facebook. This is, I, I don't know. What, you think this is a bad look? It's just a funny update. Yeah. It's a funny update. Yeah. Well, he's having fun, as humans do. That's always the thing. You know? That's always the thing. It was the same with the smoke meets clip. Yeah. It's like... Is he having fun or is he showing himself having right. fun? I know how to have fun. Anyway, shout out Zuckerberg. I hope you're actually having fun. Uh -huh. And you know what? Shoot a bow and arrow and throw a spear and all that. That's I want to do that. Yeah, I'll go to Hawaii. Be... I'll go to Hawaii and uh -huh. do that. Apparently, he's got a house in Hawaii. I don't know whether this was in Hawaii or not. Yeah. Apparently, he's got a place over there. That wouldn't be bad either. Uh, oh, yeah. And speaking of billionaires... Speaking of the richest people on the planet, apparently Elon Musk, and by the way, he was they were tracking his plane coming to the event yesterday because he doesn't live in that area anymore. He doesn't live in San Francisco area. He's completely moved out. He says he doesn't own any property anymore except for an events house, which is in the San Francisco area. Outside of that, apparently he's renting a house and exclusively living in Starbase, Texas, 
which is where all the SpaceX stuff is going on. And he says the house that he's renting is worth about 50 grand. This, oh. all, this all came via Twitter. He's saying, I ain't like those other billionaires. Uh oh, Will, Will's skeptical here. Go ahead, Will. What do you got? Uh, you can't. You're one of the richest people in the world, and you're living in some sort of shack. No. No, that can't be. I never seen you this offended before. Will. Unless he's uh he bought it waiting for his mansion to be constructed. Right? No, that's not what he said. He's bragging about it. This came Well, let me let me see. Uh, so there was a tweet that said one of the pictures. The, oh Give Will, me some uh data. Will's looking for receipts. Elon Musk lives very modestly by billionaire standards. Only one residential house plus one for events. Elon Musk uses less resources than most multimillionaires despite working way harder. This is from somebody else talking about him and that's okay. cr that's crazy that people tweet like that about like holy cow. And get a reply. Yeah. Plus, cash sitting in stocks makes each dollar outside worth more exactly proportionally. And then so Elon replied to this. Obviously, he liked this tweet. He said, my primary home is literally a 50K house in Boca Chica Starbase that I rent from SpaceX. It's kind of awesome, though. Only house I own is the events house in the Bay Area. If I sold it, the house would see less use and less bought by a big family, which might happen someday. Mm. Go ahead, Will. No, listen, if he wants to, you know, is it renting a 50K house? Or is it? He buying? says the house is worth 50K, but he's not even buying it. He's right. just renting it from SpaceX. So SpaceX owns it. Yeah, I'm just guessing maybe he works so much. He's probably in the office. Well, the but time. he has a family. He has. Uh, so you think Grimes is living at that place too? And uh, his son? Oh, she she's at her own house somewhere else. Yeah, it's a mansion next door. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, like I I don't know. I assume he sees his son on a regular, but I don't know. I guess she could be in she could be anywhere, L.A. or whatever. Yeah, you're right about that. But Listen, I, yeah. okay, let's do a quick investigation. Okay, let's look at a fifty thousand dollar property in Boca Chica, Texas. Boca Chica, Texas real estate. Um. There we go, right there for sale. Here's two hundred eighty-five thousand in Boca Chica. Let's look at that. Oh, this is in Panama. We need the Texas part. And there's going to be, oh. there's going to be people interested in this because he has been trying to get people to move there and improve the region. Yeah, that's in fine. Brownsville. Yeah, the same place. Okay, here we go. So we're getting a taste of. What's available for around a hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy thousand dollars? I don't see anything at fifty grand. So you're gonna have to, yeah. Oh my, the lowest max you could put is ninety k. All right, put fifty k. Oh wow, a Elon's house, everyone. Wow. Is okay. Are you even more skeptical now? Listen, if this is the way that he lives, scroll down, and, scroll and he down. goes to Starbase like I don't know, twenty hours a day. I, it is what it is. Scroll down here. Or, there, uh, there's look at that sheds, <laughs> five hundred square feet for twenty five grand for. Keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling down. We get to the bottom of this. So why not just live in an RV at that point? Just mm. park it. A $50,000 house. I don't know. Maybe he exaggerated a little bit. What do you think, Will? We uh, can't find any place over here. It's a lot of just land, not a lot of actual buildings. Does he mean he's renting it for fifty k a month? Is that what it means? Maybe he's exaggerating. Maybe it's worth like a hundred grand. Click on that. That's fifty thousand again. For the record, this is like a, a portable home, like rundown. No way. I mean, maybe. <laughs> uh. Well. I don't know, man. World's richest man. Maybe it's a way to stay grounded. Will. Hey, if he lives like this, that's pretty gangster. That's fifty G's right there in the same area. 
If this is his kitchen, that's pretty gangster. Wow. I wonder how private it is, though, as well. Like, he's saying he's renting it from SpaceX. Is it, like, on SpaceX property or mm. close by? Is it private? I think he would still need privacy. Starbase, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, we're just close by in Brownsville because it's not a very busy place. But anyway, that's the word. That's what they say. All right. That's what they say. Kind of awesome $50,000 property. I don't know if you've experienced this yet, Will, but apparently there's a big time Starbucks shortage going on. Is there? They Starbucks is just exploding in popularity right now. They're just crushing it as the weather heats up and everybody's getting all their milks. Really? Their milk varieties in their drinks. Well, that's one of the things that's in short supply, oat milk. Oh, yeah. But there's a lot of other things. Uh, another thing that people are mad about is the, what is it, the matcha shortage? Matcha shortage. Yeah, you have a bunch of tweets here. People are saying, and and actually chai tea as well. Chai tea bags are on temporary hold. Wow. Hazelnut syrup is out of out of stock. They're booming too much over here. You're not going to get your drinks or ingredients at certain locations. They say that it's supply chain issues be able to meet the demand there. Huh. Drinks with oat milk will not be made until, and also cake pops and cup stoppers. Wow. You know this do you This do, is the end of the world. Do you say yes or no to the to mm. the stopper? If they say to you, do you want a stopper in that? Mm, no. Yeah, I don't know. I what, think it's kind of a waste. I don't know what the stopper is about. Germs? Germs. Go on. Going into that oh. little tiny hole or is it spill? Well, I think Prevents it's spilling. I think it's spill. It's called yeah. a stopper, but Usually it's not filled to the point. You would really need to rattle that right. to get the out the top of the... Yeah, because the lid is elevated. Maybe if you're carrying like a bunch of drinks, you're like, yeah, you got to put stoppers in there. Oh. Anyway, you're not getting a stopper right now. <laughs> you're just windmilling the, uh, <laughs> the cup there. I mean, I'll tell you something about these cups that bugs me anyway is like it's more likely to drip around the seam. Yeah than it is through the top portion in many cases in my experience yeah don't get me started on cups no mcdonald's has a great cup though with the two walls you don't need to put the the I agree. other piece on it yeah. like the what is it the sleeve so it's not too hot to hold mcdonald's cup has two walls to it so it's insulated and so you grip it you can actually feel the interior wall and the exterior wall I don't know what it means for the environment. It's probably obviously terrible. Two cups for one. They're testing reusable cups in the UK. Oh, that's another thing. Starbucks is bringing back the reusable cup. They had it offline for the COVID, but oh, now yeah. you can bring your own mug again and save the environment. Okay, that's if nice. If you want to, it's up to you, Well, Anyway, there you have it. Tesla event, a variety of other topics for your viewing pleasure. Uh, what can I say? Model S... Plaid. Um, I think it looks good. I think it. I think it's fun. It'll cost you a few bucks. Probably the long range one is fine. To be honest. Uh -huh. Wait, did that just change again? The range. What the hell? What? Oh, maybe it did. What the hell? <laughs> it went down. Yeah, wasn't it like 390 before? It was. Okay, maybe we should get like another fact checker here. What the hell is going on here? Well, rain. Go to purchase price instead of potential savings. Well, the Spiracy. long range is 375 and the and the uh oh wait a sec this is not right you're on model s you're not on plaid or whatever you're on the old one or something what what, do what, you mean? what i don't know what you're doing over here something's going on here okay let me just go go to, custom uh, order right there custom order i gotta go to the u.s site 
glitch in the matrix. <laughs> okay, there you go. It's better. <laughs> oh my god! But wait a second. Maybe it's like a website issue. Okay. I don't know. All right. Anyway, there you have it. We came, we saw. We ordered a Model S. There you go. That was a long time ago, actually. It was. I don't know if, I don't know if it's going to show up or not. We'll put it over there if it does. Yeah. Use it as a gaming PC that you can sit inside of. Sure. Whole video dedicated. Cyberpunk inside. Model S Plaid shipping one day in 2077.